to death. I learned a woman was sentenced to life in prison for poisoning her child to death with antifreeze. She gave birth to a second child while in prison, who was given to foster care. But he became sick with the same symptoms, indicating a genetic metabolic disorder, not poisoning. She was later released. What an awful story. Imagine being grief-stricken with the loss of your child only to be wrongfully convicted of having killed him. Everything you worked for professionally down the tube and the financial burden of having to defend yourself. My nephew had this same disorder. He was abandoned by his birth parents and my sister and Bill adopted him. His medical care was very involved and he ended up deaf and blind before passing at 16. MMA is kind of rare. Doctors who didn't know he was adopted asked my sister if she and Bill were genetically related. This terrifies me. I saw a similar situation. Infant with multiple broken bones taken from parents due to abuse. Parents arrested. Gets more broken bones while in foster care. Two years later judge, here's case. Kid had some rare bone weakness disorder. Judge says, well basically this is a big shit show and sorry about your luck but kids been in foster care they want to adopt him and really it would be a mind fuck to take this toddler from these people so by paraphrasing of course but shit like this can happen wasn't this on forensic files today i learned that in 1825 painter samuel moss received a letter which read that his wife was sick the day after that a new one said that she was dead when two days later he went to his wife, he discovered that she was already buried. Pissed off for the slowness of communications, he invented the Moss Code. You have ten minutes to move your car. Your car has been towed. Your car has crushed into a cube. You have ten minutes to move your cube. This has always fascinated me about both old world communications and travel. It's amazing to me that life was so disconnected from even your own home for months to years at a time. Get on a Navy ship in the early 17-1800s. Your family could just be dead when you get home. Or a war has occurred or has been resolved and the entire political landscape of your nation might just be different. It's such an alien way to live compared to now. Well. I had no idea the painting of Lafayette was done by Morse. Even crazier. No idea that events surrounding the painting in Morse's life at the time would eventually lead to the creation of something so vital to the history of communication. History is crazy. For those that don't know, Lafayette was a rock star in Americs. We're talking more popular than Tom Hanks crossed with Beyonce. In fact, he may be the most popular person in American history. I doubt anyone has ever had more universal popularity. Beep beep beep. Sir, your wife died five minutes ago. Damn, that sucks. But wow, this is awesome. Thanks. Today I learned, Nirvana played a concert in Buenos Aires where the crowd threw mud and trash at the all-girl. Opening act. Kurt Cobain was so upset that he sabotaged the show by playing mostly lesser known songs in teasing Smells Like Teen Spirit without ever playing it. My father went to a Nirvana concert once and he told me that during one of the opening songs some guy threw a big huge Chuck Taylor, the shoe, at some girl and Kurt got upset because it hit her right in the face and then Kurt had Nirvana play. They're set twice as fast so they could get out of there. My father said it actually ended up being pretty cool, with the music played that way. But basically that Kurt was super upset about it. Edit. The some girl in my story turns out to be a member of the opening act. Which may be the same band that OP's article talks about. Asterisk here we are now, entertain us asterisk. No. Cobain was known for confronting dickish audiences. Especially when they were abusive to women. I was at a show in Dallas where they stopped playing in the middle of a song because the mosh pit crowd was grabbing women's boobs. Threatened to leave right then and there if people didn't shape up. Don't be a dick to an opening band. Ever. Unless they're a dick to you. First I was at a Mastodon concert once an opener got some shit in. 
Then the Mastodon drummer came out and bitched at the crowd mid-set. Today I learned of Bob Fletcher, a man who took care of the farms of three Japanese-American families while they were interned. During World War II, by keeping their farms running and paying their taxes and mortgages, he ensured the families didn't lose everything. He was even shot at for supporting them. Greater than with changing attitudes towards the wartime incarceration, he began to receive acclaim for his wartime actions late in his life. He died at the age of 101. His actions celebrated in obituaries in the New York Times and other newspapers. Unusually happy ending. From the linked articles, Bob Fletcher, 1, quit his well-paying job as a farm inspector to run the three farms. 2, had to deal with wrath of the the racist townsfolk, who were basically waiting to expropriate the Japanese farms at rock bottom dollar. 3, refused to live the main house out of respect for the Japanese families. He and his wife lived in the cottage built for the hired hands. That's a fucking man. Integrity. Hard work. Moral compass. Less than three. My grandparents were interred in Canada. My grandmother said that they were loaded onto a truck and they didn't make it to the end of the street when they saw the white folk go in and loot their stuff. Today I learned the creators of Fox and Recreation did research for the show by interviewing. Actual government officials, one said, well, I'm a libertarian, so I don't really believe in the mission of my job. Yes, I'm aware of the irony. The character of Ron Swanson was born. I had a co-worker who was terrified of police and other authority figures. Hated the government with a passion. And to top it off hated being outside. He was a park ranger. Go figure. I worked in a park and rec office for six years in a very small town. The show is really not that far off from the real thing. The public forums in the show are so goddamn spot on. I like how they got the idea for the show from watching all of the inane local government public meetings that occur. Kind of similar. This is what one of the casting directors said after she met Aubrey Plaza. I just met the weirdest girl I've ever met in my life. You have to meet her and put her on your show. Today I learned Eminem's song, Lose Yourself, was the first rap song to win an Oscar for Best. Original song. But Eminem did not even watch the awards because he did not think he stood a chance of winning. Instead, he fell asleep watching cartoons with his daughter. Who accepted the award? It's too bad because that opportunity comes once in a lifetime you. Till Eminem won an Oscar before Leonardo DiCaprio. You think he gives a damn about an Oscar? Half of the critics can't even stomach him. Let alone stand him. Today I learned in 2005. A guy named Doug Heckman read the EULA before he installed some PC software. The agreement included a clause offering financial compensation to licensees who actually read the license agreement. He emailed the company, referred to the clause in the company sent him a check for $1,000. I am sure he told that story to every fucking person he ever met after that. Make sure you always read the contracts, son. You never know what they'll put in those he he he. Yes, dad you told me that. Greater than Yahoo, has many excellent services. Yeah, that sentence didn't age well. It was a curse to get that money. Like someone who finds money in a pair of pants at a garage sale. Or someone who wins some moderate amount of money in Vegas. He will spend the rest of his days meticulously reading EULAs. Heckman, the PG adventure begins. Today I learned scientists discovered a dinosaur tail perfectly preserved in amber. It is full of feathers. Greater than the sparrow-sized creature could have danced in the palm of your hand. Now that's all I'm thinking about. A dancing dinosaur with feathers. What about the 99 million year old spider stuck in it? I'm actually curious if there are any differences. I read that and wondered. How big were those damn trees to where the sap covered portions of dinosaurs? The size of a dried apricot, that's not how I would have described it, but okay. 
Today I learned that Prince William and Prince Harry pulled a prank on their grandmother the Queen. By changing her voicemail answering message to say, Hey what's up, this is Liz. Sorry I'm away from the throne. For a hotline to Philip, press 1. For Charles, press 2. And for the Corgis, press 3. Asterisk aggressively presses 3 asterisk. Her private secretary was not amused. That seems to be one of the main British emotions. Happy. Angry. Sad. Not amused. You say, Prince William and Prince Harry. But first think we all know William was just along for the ride. Till the Queen has voicemail. Today I learned a group of undercover Detroit police buzzing as drug dealers tried to arrest another group of undercover police buzzing as drug buyers. This is like connecting two chatbots together. Greater than a resident of the neighborhood where the police brawl occurred had a suggestion for how police can further prevent incidents like this one. You've got to have to have more communication. I guess the resident said, killed me. Yeah, but it wasn't until the real drug dealers showed up posing as police officers that things got interesting. You actually under-sensationalized the title. It resulted in a brawl between two dozen officers. Also, I assumed that it was two different jurisdictions. But they were the 11th and 12th precincts. Both Detroit PD, 